We are Metal Talk, and you are Kobe Fari of Orphan Lands. That's me. Nobel Peace Prize nominee, winner of three honorary peace awards, global metal awards, but you're banned from several Arab League countries. Uh, that tells me that those countries don't want peace and unity. Do you be along with that? I think I think that the main problem uh, of our world is, is not really the countries or the people, it's more the governments. I think that the common people, each and every one of them wants to have a normal, peaceful life. Mm -hmm. But the it's a double trick because the naivety of, of humankind is a beautiful thing on one hand. On the other hand, naive people are easy to manipulate. So I think that that's, that's what happened to many people of our region. I think that, uh, I don't know, I think, to be honest with you, I've learned from Orphan Land, if we succeed to unite so many people at the same night, to be for two hours a one happy family, if we succeed to do it without any budget, power or, or seat in the parliament, so politicians could definitely do that, they just don't want it. Took me a while to realize that it's, it's what it is. But you do have power though, because uh, we believe that the power of music is almost in some ways as big as the power of politics. It is, but in terms of, of inspiring. You can inspire, you cannot make a law, you cannot send people to Haiti with your band, but you can inspire, you can show uh, that there's another way, and the people, they can open their eyes and see that there's another way. And and there's an alternative, and here it is. I honestly think that <clears throat> if, let's say, if you're now supposed to be a middleman of two enemies, I would suggest if you want to bring them to talk to each other, try to find a common thing that they both share and go to music first. Because if the both of them write a song of Iron Maiden, just talk about Iron Maiden for half an hour, they will see that they have things in common because you think that your enemy stands for everything you're against. He is what you're not. When you when you're sharing the same band, the same love to the same band, that's that's a good common ground to start a dialogue. You can see that you you're, you're the same in some level of music, for example. So that's the power of music. That's why. In our show, even in London, you can see Jews, you can see Muslims, you can see homo lesbians, you can see metalheads, you can see Christians, you can see atheists. They're all one big happy family and there's no problem. The metal people are, are very much good at it in anywhere, I think. But... Definitely agree with that, yeah. I shall be with that. Where do you think religion fits into the 21st century? I think religion. I have a lot of respect towards religions as, as a cultural background, as, as a way of living that our fathers have been living. But to be honest, I think that religion is uh, an old-fashioned uh, way. I think that we have to evolve ourselves to the next level and unity. And I think... <clears throat> The problem is not only religion. I mean, religion at its basic is a nice idea. We're the problem. The way we interpret things, the way we uh, make mistakes, the way we use power, the way we think. That, that I mean, look at holy wars. Everyone of the sides is sure that God is on his side. In between, it's kids who are being dead because of the, the bombs that the two sides are throwing on each other. And if there is a Satan, he's just laughing smoking his joint on the side and laughing about the whole thing. So so it's it's the it's a comedy, I would say. The Dante's human comedy. The Dante's human comedy. You, you made a fantastic statement on the Canaan album. Uh, I'm not sure I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Canaan, yeah. Canaan, Canaan, okay. A masterpiece of evil is to make you think that God is on your side. Exactly. Can you elaborate on that? Of course, it's, you know, um, <clears throat> the amazing power of darkness is that you can be convinced that you're the good one. I mean, it's, it's, it's like this crazy, I don't know, program in our mind, some manipulation of darkness or, or dark forces, that you think that God is on your side. And, and it's so crazy to think, because everybody's wrong. 
there's no one right, everybody's wrong. In Syria, all sides are wrong. In the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, we're all wrong. No one's right. And, and it's the masterpiece of evil to think that God is on your side. Because, I don't know, it's, it's this human, uh, something in the human nature that when you need to judge yourself, you judge yourself quite well. And when you need to judge the other, on the exact same story, you judge, you're very harsh on him. There's, there's an example on the Bible when, when King David wants uh, the wife of Uriah. I don't know if you know that biblical story. He sends his soldier to the front line to die so that he will be able to take his wife, King David. And then uh, his assistant comes to him. He knows he cannot tell him, what have you done? You sent him to die and now you took his wife. Because he will not judge himself on a bad way. So he tells him a different story. He tells him about the ship of the poor guy. He had only one ship. And the rich guy with a huge amount of ships wanted to take his ship. And eventually he did some manipulation that killed him and he took the ship. And then he asked King David, what will be the punishment of this guy? He was rich and took the ship of the poor guy. So King David tells him, this is what he did. He tells him, yeah, that's what he did. He should die. So then tells him, so that's your punishment. Hmm. Because when we judge ourselves, everyone is sure that he is 100%. Of course we know that sometimes we do mistakes, but at the end of the day we think that we're pretty much fine. It's everyone, me included. Everyone thinks like that, and, and we all think that God is on our side. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you to do a song called uh, God Was Never On Your Side, and you've got a massive gig in Israel on the 28th of December, the anniversary of his uh, passing. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? Because it's the first time I've heard about it today. And, uh, it's, we uh, won't be there actually. <laughs> actually, I, you, it will be amazing if you'll be there because our Tel Aviv shows, and especially the one we do uh, in December, it's Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a Jewish holiday of light. Yeah. And we always do that special show on Hanukkah because of the light and all that concept. And it's always sold out, full packed, like 1,000 people are coming. The crowd is singing like crazy. It's some adventure you must see. You must and and love to. really highly recommend it. And and I'll be very happy to have you there. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a longer set. It's gonna be like I don't know two and a half hours maybe. Career perspective all through your six hour Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. Queen just played, uh, Queen and Adam Lambert to give them their official title just played Tel Aviv. Uh, we covered that. Uh, you did? Yeah, yeah, we, we did the UK exclusive on that. But one thing that stuck with me over that, or two things, was your open letter um, to um, um, Let There Be Light you ended it with. Your open letter to the names escaping. Roger Waters or the parliament no, member? No, 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 to uh, the American bands. Ah, uh, Pearl Jam, Eddie so, Vedder. Yeah, sorry, it's skipping there for me. Eddie Vedder, yeah. Yeah, let there be light, but Roger Waters is what I wanted to ask you about. What do you think about his campaign to boycott Israel? I think he is an amazing, one of the greatest musicians of our times. With that said, he's one of the most stupid artists combining politics that I've ever met in my life. I haven't met him, but but I've ever what I've heard, because I combine politics as well. Of course you do. Yeah. But I bring the people together. I haven't seen anything, any benefit comes out of Roger Waters' way, rather than antagonism, rather than nothing. Mm. And the biggest question that I ask myself. Sometimes people might say that the Jewish people tend to run very fast and wave the anti-Semitism flag. I don't want to do it with Roger, but I cannot stop myself from wondering why doesn't he say a word about Syria, where 50,000 kids have died. This is just 200 kilometers up. Why doesn't he use his power to say anything about the United States? Does the United States... The United States is the big weapon supplier to the Middle East. How come you play in the United States? There was an American guy who once said, if I'll have to uh, 
uh, boycott the country because of their foreign policy, I'll never leave my living room. <coughs> how's France different than Israel? How's, how's, how's the UK different than Israel? The UK conquered half of the world. Still rule and control some of the parts and stuff, and still, I don't know, maybe I would say, uh, living today on, on, on those treasures of, of, of the early days. I don't judge the UK, I don't judge definitely not you, not anyone here, not my fans. They have nothing to do with that. You want to say something? Come, play the show. The stage is yours. The fan loves you. Speak to them. Dialogue is the way. Artists should, should, should bring harmony to places of disharmony. That's what art is all about. The, the poets succeed to say what all the people feel. They succeed to influence. They succeed to, to bring inspiration. And Elgin Waters just behave like the least of the idiotic politicians, you know? And that's very disappointing because he's such an amazing musician. He could have gained much more with playing a show, making an interview, saying that there is a problem. I say that there is a problem. I'm not closing my eyes. There is a problem. But what I do, I take a Palestinian band to tour with me. We get, we get the, the Metal Hammer Award. I share it with them. That's much more uh, to do rather than boycotting. It was very powerful what you did there. Very, very powerful. Yeah, unfortunately I'm not as big as, and strong as Water Waters, but I think that we, we succeed to do more than, than what it does because Boycott is not the answer. Boycott will never get anything. If people give a credit to the boycott that the artist did with South Africa, I don't think that that, that was the, the key. I actually love the album of Paul Simon, Grace Man, which he went to South Africa and record the album. Yeah. That's the way I believe. That's the way I believe. And I'm, I'm hell, I'm not right wing or left wing. I'm not support any move of our governments. We started this interview when I told you that the main problem is governments. Yet, with that said, the music must be played. Must. It's a must. Yeah, and why deny the fan base the opportunity to see Queen and Adam Lambert and Pink Floyd, anybody else, for a situation that they never created? Of course. It's, music should be played. There was this very big um, protest artist in Argentina, her name was Mercedes Sosa and one of her songs in Spanish it was Si se calla el cantor, calla la vida it means when the singer is silenced life, life is, is silenced and it's a protest song because the government was trying to shut the music music should be played music should be played Come with all your idea about the wall and break it on stage, you know, and 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 boycotting Israel. What what do you gain out of it? Mm -hmm. That I will not want to listen to Pink Floyd anymore. I mean, and many Israelis are so disappointed. And and the the, the most ridiculous fact is that he himself played in Israel for fifty thousand people, took the money, which was a lot of money, I bet. and then he says you should boycott Israel. He never even contributed, from what I know, 10 quid to any of, of his purpose that, that he's lecturing about and, and, and doing. He never did anything to, to support it, except them writing letters and stuff like that. Are you a Zionist? I am... I'm Jewish. I'm Israeli. The word Zionist or any word is to be interpreted in so many ways. When you say a Zionist to an Arab, when you say a Zionist to an Israeli, it's a complete different thing. So I wonder how should I answer? Yeah, I'm a Zionist, of course. I love my country. I'm Israeli. I'm very proud of my country. I think we have many problems. But again, a Zionist, in, in the ears of another person who is not Israeli, it's a completely different word than my description to Zionist. For me, Zionist is just the love of the Jewish people to their homeland. Mm. 
it's mentioned in literature and songs and and you know for for decades and and centuries the word zion is just another name for jerusalem this is what zion means by the rivers of babylon where we sit down and we remembered zion this is this is psalms so yeah i'm a zionist but with a description of my own not the description that the propaganda or Arabs may think about Zionists. So I'd be very careful with that, in a way. Okay. <clears throat> um, you mentioned King David, uh, well, twice now, and uh, yeah. that's 5,000 5, years ago, I believe. Probably four, five, yeah, four easily. 5, 000, easily yeah. Yeah. Do you think that your words will resonate for that long? The what? Do you think that your words will resonate for that period of time? Your message? <laughs> One can only hope. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know, to be honest. But you know, one, one thing very funny we always say on stage, we have a song called Brother. Yeah. It's Isaac singing to Ishmael. And one, one of the phrases of the song is, the Lord blessed us both, but we still fight and claim that kid on the mountain, what was his name? Meaning, the Muslim believe that the kid on the mountain that Abraham took to the mountain, it was Ishmael. Jews and Christians, following the Jews believe that it was Isaac on the mountain. You see how politics and religion and, and propaganda, everyone takes it to his own side. No, no, it was Ishmael on the mountain. The Muslims, they have a whole holiday that Abraham took Ishmael to the mountain. The Jews, it's obvious that it was Isaac on the mountain. And it was 4,000 years ago. So people still have their own version who was the kid on the mountain. That's why we say, the Lord blessed us both, but we still fight and claim that kid on the mountain. What was his name? Well, it's not the spot that Christ uh, <coughs> ascended to heaven and Muhammad was taken to heaven, exactly the same spot. Of course, and we also have prophets who went to heaven the same way, like Elijah. And uh, to be honest, it's fairy tales. No one goes like that to heaven. I mean, come on. <laughs> not, even, not even Dio or, 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 or Lemmy. <laughs> which were the ones who really deserve to go that way, if you ask me. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Yeah. Um, back to the uh, Canon album, just before we start to uh, wrap up this interview. What is the big message behind the, the Canon album? Uh, it's an excellent piece of work, it's very different to anything you've ever done before. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the big, big message behind this? Well, first we wrote it to, to a theatre, so it was a different way of composing and writing and, and we didn't compose it the way we write the Orphanland albums. But I think that the message is that we need, uh, we need to grow up, we need to overcome. Yeah. Like we say in the same song that you mentioned, to overcome we must, redeem the prisoners of the past. We need to, to release those chains that we have from our past. I get hope sometimes when I play in Germany, when I see Israelis and Germans today. Those guys were sending my grandparents to gas chambers. And now we're making love in Berlin. So that's a, that's, that's a, a very hopeful uh, situation that I can believe that Jews and Arabs or any other person <coughs> who have conflict, they can get along and, and we need to put the past behind us. We need to change the education system, I think that's the key for everything. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. And um, I think that's the message, that's the basic message of Orphan Land and Khan, that we are all one and just imagine how the world would be if we will not live to survive, if we will not struggle just to stay alive and survive, if we will all grow and, 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 and floor and, and, you know, rise. That would be amazing. Well, I think you're going to play a major, major part in bringing that about <coughs> with your music, your message and 100% um, so. support from hopefully all of this country. I can't speak for all of this country, but certainly from this little part of this country. Well, you're telling our story. That's that's more than enough. And, and uh, thanks for doing that. Thanks for speaking to us, Kobe. It's been My pleasure. Absolute wonderful pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You're invited to Tel Aviv if you can do it. Please do it. We want to do it. We want to do it. Cool. Hopefully, we'll see you there. Great. Great.